Well, this evening uh, I'm uh, investigating if I can repair this cathode ray tube out of my digital signal analyzer. Um, some of you have seen the digital signal analyzer in use. I bought it, well, I was given it about a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a number of problems with it, there some of the balls needed replacing. Um, but recently, it's be, uh, it, it, well, about two years ago, it failed with the display packed up altogether and had no display. Uh, took all the display apart. The display is um, an HP 1345A. Um, it was the same display actually used in the film War Games in the 80s, where the teenagers hack the uh, NATO and sort of get in and sort of manage to control the. Uh, had basically had their finger on the button. It's actually a very good film, it's worth watching. Um, it was actually one of these displays that was actually used to generate all the graphics, but they just used colour filters to uh, superimpose to make it look a bit more dramatic. So this is, yeah, this is the cathode ray tube out of the uh, out of the unit, because the display is packed up again. It's been doing some strange things where when you switch it on, it sort of, like, it comes on and then it, the display flashes and, and, it, and you can, sometimes I think I can hear a tick and a click. Um, and I've basically I've just been ignoring it because it does it so regularly but the last time I turned it on which was last week um, it did that and then the display went out again oh, oh no the display's packed up again so I um, took the thing apart and, and checked all the bits I did before I rewound the transformer as I said I checked the, the winding of the transformer that looked good I checked the isolation of the transformer um, from the primary to the secondaries there's no problem at all there uh, so the transformer looks good. I've replaced some of the high voltage capacitors. Uh, some of them have quite a high voltage across them because some of them are actually connected to the, the feedback from the uh, display. Is um, It takes a minus 2.5 kV and feeds it back into an op-amp through a dropper resistor. Um, of course, if that, it's also got a capacitor in series to sort of like block any DC. And if that fails, that would just take, wipe out the chip straight away. But I've been through everything and it all looks fine. I have, but I have replaced a couple of other parts. And I'm thinking, well, it, every time it does this, it takes an op-amp out. And the op-amp's not cheap. Um, so I've have been having to order op-amps. They are not available in this country. or well, they are actually. I found some a couple of days ago. But they are very hard to find. Um, they're about six or seven quid each. And it's a pain. Every time I switch it on, it works for a while and packs up again. So I've been over going around the boards, as I say, checking the board, and uh, can't find anything sort of definite that was that was faulty. I was thinking I might find a leak, a breaking down capacitor, or something like that. But I've checked the four thousand four thousand volt capacitor has been checking them at work on the four kV isolation tester. No problem at all. Nothing go wrong with that in there. The board hasn't is all clean. I've even actually heme sealed the board, which is a conformal coating to try and protect it from damp and tracking. No problem at all. So I sort of thinking, well, you know. I broke one of the units down, I actually damaged the uh, vector generator engine by overvolting it by accident, I think. And uh, so I've only got one display now, and that display has come from the States. And I actually finally managed to get one for a reasonable price, and it did say untested, which is, you know, the loophole, isn't it? Uh, and I managed to get one untested, uh, got it here, same thing, no display. So had a quick look at that, and it's the same thing, the switching FET's getting, the switching transistor's getting hot, and that's caused by the, basically it's not being switched, it's, it's hard on, it's just being DC into the into the input of the um, transformer, so you've got no flyback effect, so you're not getting the high voltage generated. So, I've got that one sitting on behind me waiting to be repaired, but in the meantime, I want to look at the original one, um, and this CRT, if I can, if I can check, check this to sh see what's wrong with it, uh, I can sort of like hopefully have a spare CRT. What I did this afternoon at work I thought well I the only thing I haven't checked is the CRT and I can do a few things at work obviously I've got CR test, CRT testers at work but I will check for a couple of shorts between elements and things and the first thing I thought I'd do is I'd do a heat cathode short you know that's that's straight enough straightforward enough to do so I applied um, heat current to the filaments they're 5.8 volts these heat filaments and this um, and then got an isolation tester between the cathode and the uh, heater itself uh, and switched it on and to my surprise it was showing zero ohms I think oh, well, maybe it's a common you know common connection to the to the cathode you know so some heaters are actually connected to the cathode themselves um, but then when I turn the heater off after it started to cool down a bit that that connection opens went, went open circuit again and I think ah oh, this looks like a classic heater cathode short which is quite common in the cathode ray tube because the heater is basically right behind the cathode um, and you can't really see here but at the top of the electron gun we've got the uh, 
it's very difficult to see here, but the top part is that there's the, the, the batch of the electron gun. All these other parts are grid controls. The further down you go, a grid control for um, focusing and astigmatism and things like that. And then you come to the beam deflectors down here, which actually deflect the beam. This is an electrostatic discharge uh, CRT, so it relies on a voltage on these plates in here that you can see to actually deflect the beam. Um, you've got the final anode cap here and the aqua dagger on the outside, which is basically a capacitive. This is on the outside and on the inside. This forms a capacitive effect. So the rectified uh, DC from the multiplier is basically smoothened by this aqua dag. Um, so yeah, we found this heater cathode short. And the next thing I want to do is, I don't want to scrap this tube. This tube is a bit weak. These tubes are unobtainium now. They really are, they've gone. You can actually replace the uh, whole display unit with an LCD. Um, very nice looking LCD display but the thing is I never really use the thing anyway and it's about 400 pounds it's just not viable for, for someone like me who, who never uses it. If it's a spectrum analyzer I'd say yeah I'll re definitely replace it because the spectrum analyzer does get used but this digital signal analyzer doesn't. So this evening's uh, video is going to try and see if we can clear this short on here. Now I have one sort of tool to my arsenal which is quite useful and this is a B&K um, CRT a tester and a rejuvenator and I know well I think I know from memory that this will actually attempt to clear um, heater cathode shorts and things like that so let me zoom you in a bit so you can see um, you probably see one of these on sort of Shango sites or there's lots of the Americans still use them for repairing their TVs um, so the idea is that I'm going to try and connect it all up connect so I made a sort of like a flying lead system for it uh, so I can basically, I've just got to identify all the pins, we've got the service manual so I should be able to work it out. I only need a few of the, of the uh, electrodes, I basically all I need is the heater, the cathode and a couple of the, of, of the um, grid controls. So basically what we're going to do is basically turn the, the, the electron gun into a, a diode. Um, but what we could do also is we can apply a large discharge capacitor between the uh, cathode itself and the um, heater. Now there is a risk with doing this. Is that the risk is that if you if the heat is shorted to uh, the cathode, um, which it is, or it's not solid short circuit, but it sort of jumps between a couple hundred k and then sometimes it's zero ohms and then it's up in the megs sort of thing. There is a risk that applying that sort of large energy spike between the cathode and the filament, you're going to open circuit the filament, in which case the the, 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 the tube is scrap. There is another option you can do, which I'm not going to bother with because it's just not worth it, is to isolate the, um, the secondary of the, uh, the filament from the cathode. And what that means is that if the, if the cathode shorts to the uh, heater, it will just float. There will be no potential difference between the two, and therefore we're not going to have any problem with um, you know it shorting out and drawing excess current from the power supply and blowing up the, the switching FET again. So um, let me just quickly show you on the circuit. I think I can show you here with that. Uh, so this is our transformer here. You can see these two wires here. These run out to the heater. That's a high voltage multiplier tap. And here's our two cathodes that go off to the grid. Uh, and, 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 and cathode and grid. Um, so what's happening is there's a short between one of these and one of this one in the transformer. Now you will notice that there is actually a link here between the cathode and the heaters and that's good you know that does suggest that the cathode and the heaters are tied together but the problem is if there's a short further up the, the winding of the, the filament of the heat of the heater you're going to still get short that transformer out because basically you're going to be shorting this point of this here to the cathode of this diode to here and it's just going to put a short on the, on the secondary of the transformer. There is one thing that's maybe work and or may not work totally but it might be worth these these connections here to the filament uh, go right back to the CRT um, I might be able to reverse the polarity of those because it's AC anyway it doesn't doesn't matter but if it's one side of the filament or one of the you know the actual connection going into the filament it, if I reverse that so it's that tap tap here at the top I bring that to here if that shorts, it doesn't make any difference. There's not going to be any potential change because there is grounded there anyway. So that's sort of things that just been running through my mind at the moment. So let me get this set up, uh, and then we can see if we can actually get any sensible readings out of this CRT tester.
Right, let me just show you what the problem is. This is the connection between, or the continuity between the cathode and the one element of the heater. It's 3.7 ohms. This is with the um, heater off. Everything's obviously sort of like contracted down and it's obviously shorting out. So we've got 3.7 ohms between, this is, uh, let me just show you. So we've got two, two connections here. That's the cathode, that's the heater there heater there and this is the cathode so I'm connected up to one element of the heater and one to the cathode and we see we've got 3.6 ohms here now if I go to the other side of the filament you see it's 2.8 ohms so this is sort of like what I'm trying to sort of think if I can't fix this thing what I'm going to do is so we've got a, a short between pin 14 here and 2 um, there's a, sh a lower source, uh, lo lower resistance path from 14 to 2 than there is from 1 to 2. So that would suggest to me that that, if I, uh, if I can't clear the short, if I make sure that the cathode and pin 2 are at the same potential, or as close to, as possible, I might be able to still use this. Let me just show you the circuit. Let's just wind this around so you can see. So this is the circuit here. Uh, not particularly clear, but where are we? So this is the, um, these are the heaters here. So we've got the heater coming in here and the heater coming in here. So what we want to do is we've got this common reference point here, this, this 0 volt connection here that ties the cathode to the heater. So what I want to do is make sure that if this fails, that this pin 14 at the moment is going to to uh, going to go to sh when it, if it does fail goes shorts to um, pin two, and that is actually exactly how it's wired. So I can't improve on that. If it was the other way around, I might have been able to swap the heater elements around so it's the, you know it's less potential difference. But that's clearly probably what the problem is. Uh, this is this is a. Uh, well, a dead short circuit as far as I'm concerned. Let me just turn the heaters on and you'll see what happens. So all I'm doing now is I'm turning the heaters on so as it expands, there you go, straight away, it's it's cleared it. Turn it off again, it's off now, just let it cool down. As it slowly cools down, you'll see that it will um, it will open up again, or short close up again, should I say, and we'll uh, lose that, uh, that isolation we've got at the moment. You'll see it will fail. Um, and it's obviously, you know, this is the problem why I'm starting it up. It's into a short circuit and it's fighting to try and clear that short. Um, let me just give the neck of the tube a tap. There you go, it's gone. So, yeah, we've got a failing CRT. Um, now, I have one option here is the last ditch res attempt is to try and blast this clear because. Uh, I don't think this tube is viable anymore. So the next thing to do is I could charge a capacitor up to sort of like 500 volts and try and blow, sh blow the short away sort of thing. Um, the other option I could do is actually could quickly connect it up to my 60 volt power supply and just give it a whack with that. Um, I mean 60 volts, if it's at this resistance that should be enough current to sort of like blow the short away but it, I could end up damaging the CRT irreparably and it's never going to be able to uh, produce any emissions at all because the the uh, filament will blow open. But uh, so let's quickly try that. Uh, in the day, I think this, this CRT has probably had its day, um, and it's uh, even if I do get this fixed now, I don't even know if it's going to be reliable. So I'm just what I'm just doing now. Is I'm just connecting up my power supply. Okay. Uh, so it's 60 volts now, so what I'm going to do is take the meter off ohms range because obviously you don't want to stick 60 volts straight across the meter. I'm going to apply 60 volts across that short. Don't worry about that sound, that's me shorting the leads out. So let's just see what our resistance is. Okay, we're open at the moment, so it looks like it might have cleared it. Let's give it a tap on the neck to see if that's done anything. Okay, that's promising. Well, at the moment it's promising, but what I might find is when I apply um, the heaters, let's apply the heaters. No, we actually haven't, you know, we've blown the filament totally open, so let's have a look. Um, I think we might have killed it. OK, 
Okay, let me just uh, let's get this camera out of the way so you can see what's going on. So I'm trying to see if I, I've got the heaters on. Uh, this set to 6.3 volts. I'm just looking for filament inside. Oh no, no, filament's still glowing. Can you see that? Good. The filament's still going. So maybe we've cleared this short. Sorry, this is all handheld. It's a bit, a bit difficult to sort of show you all the angles that uh, I need to show you. Let's, uh... Right, so let's re disconnect the power, then it cooled down. Okay, so the filaments are cooling now and let them contract again. So basically what we've done is we've applied, we've got a short here to here and it looks like, so the cathode is shorting to this part now, the meter, I've just seen the meter twitch. Uh, so we've applied a, a large current between these two points to try and clear it. Now, you see it's, it is still there. Um, so the, the next step to do is to um, charge up a larger voltage, uh, put up a high potential voltage across it and try and blow the short um, further apart. Um, it's a bit like trying to clear these tin whiskers off these uh, transistors, but uh, we'll just give it a tap again. Yeah, it's... Yeah, definitely a problem with the CRT. So, okay, let's, let's, let's try it. Let's charge up something a bit bit more beefy and give it a real blast see if we can uh, see if we can fix this thing once and for all okay this will be the last sort of attempt I'm going to make on it uh, this is the high voltage power supply I'm going to charge up a, a large family capacitor this is capacitor it is uh, I think it's one mic one half microfarad of 500 volts I'm going to charge it up to about 250 volts I'm going to apply the same voltage I did like with the other power supply across the cathode to the heater Try and blow the uh, the short clear. So we'll we'll try that. Um, this will, is there's a big risk of damaging the CRT as I said before. But you know we've got nothing to lose now. At the moment it's not working. Uh, this might fix it or it might kill it altogether. Okay, our cap's fully charged. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll be very careful touching this. It's got a 500 volts across it. I'm going to just basically connect it across the cathode to the heaters. Uh, the Make sure the unit's on. I'm just going to try and blow that short clear. And a little click, so it might have done something. So I need to also, if you do something like this, you make sure that that cap is actually discharged because it would be quite an unpleasant shock if you were to touch it. I just shorted it out with a bit of aluminium, it's fine. Okay, right. So let's measure it. Resistance again. When it's clear, turn the. Uh, see, it's, no, it's in the megs, so that's not too bad. It's cooling down. Give it another tap. It's looking promising at the moment. Just switch the heat element back on. Switch off. Um, heaters. Uh, it's not looking so good this time. Oh dear. I think we've blown the filament open. Just check. Let's check continuity with the. Uh, Heaters, see if we've got anything. No. Okay, so our filament's blown open. So unfortunately, the result of trying to clear the short uh, has clearly blown the uh, filament uh, open circuit and this CRT is now definitely dead. Yeah, got nothing. So unfortunately, it was a, an attempt to try and repair a CRT that was dead anyway um, and we've just made it <laughs> even worse now we haven't got we won't even get any emissions from the CRT so yeah disappointing end but um, hope it was of some interest thanks for watching